For over three years, a large Danish-led group of scientists from 14 European universities has researched, dissected and discussed such issues as what will the agriculture of the future be like and what will Europeans be eating in 10 years' time. In this series of documentaries, we have followed in the footsteps of the researchers and focused on the upheavals that will change rural life forever. What will happen when the climate gets more unstable and hotter as a result of global warming? What will farmers do when alternating drought and floods become the norm? A European research panel is trying to foresee the future for wine production in Europe. Will Spain become a desert? Can wine still be cultivated in Italy in 2020? Or will Denmark become Europe's new wine producer? In the heart of Tuscany, in Italy. <laughs> this is where the famous Chianti Classico was produced. It was those distinctive raffia wrap bottles that made this wine area so widely known in the 1970s. There are vineyards everywhere here. The great wine producing houses have been exporting their wine all over the world for decades. Wine provides a living for the people of this region with the help of a perfect climate. You know, I'm very proud of this vineyard. Francesco Daddy's winery extends over 15 hectares of vineyards and produces about 30,000 bottles of wine each year. He took over the family winery from his father 13 years ago. I feel a big responsibility, especially uh, with my family and my father, who's trusting me in this uh, in this thing because he grew up here and he's very, uh, he's in love with this place and uh, he, I really feel now his trust and uh, he's, uh, he's following me. He doesn't see much of his wife and two children at this time of the year because the grapes are ready for harvesting. The grape, good color, and the seeds should be brown. Chianti is made with Sangiovese grapes. They're an excellent grape for capturing the character of the soil, and this gives the wine a very distinctive flavor. But these grapes are also very sensitive to sudden changes in the weather, or to more extreme conditions such as hail, heavy rain, or even just dampness from mist. The weather will be changing. For generations, the climate in these latitudes has been very stable, but things are about to change. I have to tell you that in the last uh, uh, five, eight years, we have such as like tropical storms. This is a, a typical result of heavy rains that we have. We, this road that we make it every year, almost flat. This is the result. The heavy rain showers damage not only the roads, but also the slopes on which the vines grow. And even if the weather seems dry and stable just now, things can change very rapidly. In my first years, I was not looking so much to the weather report or the forecast. Uh, it was always beautiful, always looking outside. One of Francesco Daddy's worst enemies in the autumn is the mist. A fog is a rather new phenomenon this period of the year in the last, in my experience of 12 years of harvest here. The mist comes rolling in along the hillsides. Grape pickers toil in a race against time to gather the harvest in. But the mist has come in incredibly quickly and now lies like a thick wet blanket over Francesco Daddy's fields. 
The moisture encourages the growth of mold on the grapes. This is mold. This mold develop bad taste and bad smell. I feel, you feel disarmed. If mold inside, you are not taking this grape. Absolutely, it's a waste of time, that's it. I mean, simply leave it. The mist has gone again, but it has affected the grapes, and many of them are ruined. The harvest is not as large as it once was. This year, probably we are around uh, 65%. We have left a lot of grape on the ground. A European research group has been working for three years to map the future for agriculture on the continent. Exactly. Each right. member of the group brings specialist knowledge to a forum for discussion about how Europe will produce the food it needs in the year 2020. Climate change is one of the major themes of these discussions. The, the problem though is, is that we are also going to experience a climate that is much more variable Mm -hmm. uh, that has more extremes of droughts, of heat waves, of storms, hails, and these are much more difficult to adapt to, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Rain is going to be the same. The problem is that before it was raining uh, a certain amount in a month, now it's going to be to, in the same month, it's going to rain at the end the same, but in three days. Mm -hmm. So that water is basically lost. Soil is eroded. Maybe it's raining too much during flowering season, so Maybe all half of the of the harvest is completely gone, and and so on. It's it's going to be more extreme, basically mm -hmm. everywhere, yeah. and this is where the challenge really of the adaptation lies. Meanwhile, in Tuscany, Francesco Daddi follows on television events further south in Sicily. A devastating mudslide has destroyed an entire section of a town. The extreme weather conditions are getting worse and worse. You can see we had even hail here. Hail, we had pieces of ice like this. You, you can see uh, sometimes, uh, you can see here it's, it's broken. So you had hail and even hail is something that was not frequent. I remember my grandmother, she never did the insurance for the hail here because she used to tell me that uh, it's very unlikely to have hail in this area. Now I've done insurance almost uh, from 2002 because it is likely that every year you have, uh, uh, at least you are hit twice, but let's say 10% of damage. So whenever you see those black clouds approaching, you know that, okay, this is hail or this is heavy rain. You, you would like to have an umbrella and run all over the place uh, to preserve your girls under the rain. Climate change is evident all over Europe. The wine-growing belt is moving north. While Francesco Daddi's harvest gets smaller every year, there are other places where growers' smiles are getting ever broader. We are half in summer, some Knoxlow recorder again. We meet a very happy Danish wine grower in Colling, a town in Jutland. It's good. Yeah. Vines have been grown here for the past 10 years, and Sven Mosko has found that the climate has got better and better with each year. It's a fantastic mountain, som we have noget i år, som vi er meget lykkelig over. Det betyder good vin. Once, wine production at this latitude was mostly a hobby, but now the professional growers are beginning to take an interest. Klimaet har forandret sig, og det betyder altså, at vi nu begynder at kunne dyrke ikke bare vin for sjov, men vin for alver, og som sætter Danmark på vinkortet. Sven Mosko is one of the front runners among Danish wine producers, and over the past few years, he's won prizes for his wines at international tastings. Vinen er kommet for at blive, og vinzonen den rykker mod nord, og vi kan lave pragtfuld vin, og det må være det, der er omkødet. 
Vi får en rigtig stor høst i år. The warmer climate has made its mark all over Europe. Spain is drying out. The sun, the very source of life, now burns so hot here that shortage of water has become a serious problem. In the Yecla district of eastern Spain, the heat and lack of water have turned fertile vineyards into deserts. Wine grower Ramon Pouch Martinez has now given up. The dried up vines have no value except as firewood. El agua es, digamos, es la base fundamental. Todo aquí, esta zona es del altiplano, digamos que el, el 80% es secano. Y no, es una, no hay una continuidad de humedad, que es lo que la planta a veces pues, necesita. When Ramon was a young man, the average annual rainfall in this area was 600 millimeters. Now there's only a third of this amount each year. En la edad que tengo, sí estoy viendo que que cada vez llueve menos. In many places, irrigation is the only way of keeping agriculture going. In Yecla, millions of cubic meters of water are pumped up from underground, but this consumption of water has its price, and the effects can be seen at the local waterworks. Se puede decir que este uno de los pozos está seco. Eh, también aquí otro, otro más que también ella es, eh, está seco también. Y de los cinco pozos que había hace, digamos, 20, 30 años, pues ya, no, ya quedan funcionando mmm, dos pozos nada más, dos pozos. Once water gushed out from this spring, which supplied the whole area with water. Now, according to experts, the last drops from the underground water reserves are being pumped up. Pues en estos momentos está muy crítica, porque en plazo de 8 o 10 años se quedará seco. Se podría convertir en un desierto total, porque hay zonas aquí que sin riego sean disérticas, y entonces volveríamos, digamos, 40 años atrás, cuando no lo teníamos antes, así que prácticamente no avanzaríamos nada, sino que reduciríamos. Soy pequeñita, dice mi madre, me dijiste pequeñita, y se me olvidó el decirte que la mujer pequeñita... Well, in Spain, people have big hopes in that region. Discussing shortages of natural resources and the way that what remains should be divided can be a tricky business, as the European Research Panel knows only too well. But why do you need to have so much agriculture then, when you don't have the water for it? Why do we need to have so much agriculture? Yeah. Why do you need to have so many houses in the Alps if you don't have the sunshine to be warm and you have to put heat? No, but, but you I mean, have to if, if, compensate if you look, what nature you, doesn't if, give you. If, I mean, don't uh, put street lights in your country at 4 p.m. We don't need to put street lights in my country. No, 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 we don't no. use electricity. I'm not, I'm not talking about because we have sunshine. I'm, I'm talking about an unsustainable use of water. Unsustainable use of street lights. Just move to another place where there is light at 4 exactly. p.m. So, so stop using the water. So stop, stop being in the, the street. Stop being in the street at 4 p.m. and don't use the lights. Objective research principles are put aside, and feelings run high when North and South discuss the common resources of the planet. The water used there is not sustainable. I'm not saying that we, in other Jürgen, co countries... Jürgen, it's not sustainable from your point of view, and water is a local issue that should be solved with the local people, I with their local criteria I, I, and priorities. But emissions of greenhouse gases no. are a global issue, and we all have a right to comment no, on no, the streetlights. No, 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 no. In Tuscany too, summers are getting ever hotter and water resources are diminishing. Francesco Daddy remembers his childhood. We have a river, and uh, this river was even crossing the road. I mean, the, the water was flowing over the road. <laughs> oh. 
When I was so young, I was not considering about how hot it was, but I clearly remember water, a lot of water, animal, crabs, fishes. And uh, this river is no longer there. Uh, this river in these years is, is dry. It's The water, which sometimes falls all too violently, is at other times now an expensively scarce resource. This change in climate can completely undermine the vineyards cultivated for generations by the Daddy family. I don't want to be the black sheep, <laughs> the one after uh, many years, the one who has uh, somehow spoiled. If Francesco Daddy wants to survive as a wine grower, something has to be done. You have always to, to be proactive. And uh, at least you should try, we are trying even new things. Francesco has had all his new fields scanned systematically. With the resulting geological map, he can see exactly what's underground. And you can see that's the area. Uh, the green area and blue area, it means that you have a good uh, soil with not big stones that somehow prevent the, the vine to develop the roots. You need absolutely a scientific approach. You cannot longer just uh, rely on tradition. Uh, there are now means that are able to help you to to know something more. And uh, I'm very open to new technologies. He will now channel the rain into huge underground tanks, enabling him to drip irrigate each individual vine during the critical first two years. In my small world, I'm just trying to, to do my best to help uh, my, my vines to, to survive and to go on, even when it's too hot and they may reward me with a good grape. That's the idea. <laughs> it's an exchange. Farmers and uh, other people in business and so on have all of the time been subject to markets being changing. So what, what is new here is that the environment also is changing. I think there are two parts. One is in more individual, is adapting, adaptation, but then there is another that is global, that is mitigation. Otherwise, I mean, it's, we yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. I mean, we, simply we, adapt. We, exactly. I mean, we need to, we, we need to, to, to reduce our uh, emissions. Yeah, but that is but, something that has to be uh, carried out globally. I mean, it, exactly. it's Exactly, but, but this will not okay. help this farmer for the next couple of decades or so, because he's going to get the climate change Enough. anyway. Uh, maybe he should give up uh, wine production and mm. put something else on his fields. The end of the day over the Tuscan vineyards is still a beautiful sight but it's far from certain that the perfect climate for wine growing will be found here in the future. When the wine belt moves north, where then will the perfect climate be for wine cultivation? Maybe it will be in a place like this, near the town of Freiburg in southern Germany. Here, southern German wine growers are enjoying themselves. They've also noticed that something is happening to the climate. The next <laughs> the harvest was gathered in long ago. Now it's time to taste the wine, together with good neighbours. Also, man kann dankbar sein, wenn man so einen Jahrgang hat. Wir hatten eine sehr schöne lange Reifephase. Wir konnten die Trauben relativ lange hängen lassen. Man, da ist jetzt halt schon so weit. Das ist das Phänomenale. Bessere Qualität und das ist eigentlich wichtiger wie die Großmenge. Also wenn jedes Jahr so was gibt, dann ist der Winzer glücklich auf jeden Fall. At the German State Institute for Wine Cultivation in Freiburg, 
Dr. Volker Jürger has been closely studying climate change and its significance for German wine. Für die Deutschen ist äh, der Klimawandel eine äh, positive Sache, weil wir haben nach diesen ganzen Prognosen, äh, was Klimawandel bedeuten könnte, eine zunehmende Niederschlagsintensität kombiniert mit einer Wärmung. Das heißt also, wir kriegen keine Verhältnisse wie in der Sahara oder in den trockensten Gebieten La Mancha und ähnliches. Äh, es ist der goldene Schnitt zwischen feuchter Niederschlag und Wärme so, dass die wärmeliebende Rebe noch besser wächst. However, a changing climate also brings new problems, moisture which can lead to fungal diseases. Volker Jürger is developing new grape varieties resistant to these destructive diseases. So hier sehen wir einige Samen. Die Samen ist das Züchtergold und für den Züchter ist das natürlich der Diamant, weil jeder äh, Kern ist eine Pflanze. Und jede Pflanze ist ja nachher ein Individuum, ein Genotyp. At the Institute, several thousand vines have been crossed to create new varieties. The plants are tested in glasshouses to find out exactly which ones are resistant to disease. Oh, yeah, it's A poisonous mixture of various disease-causing molds is prepared in the laboratory. Das wird nun mal da reingemacht jetzt. 16 times a day, the sprinkler comes into operation to create the worst possible conditions for the plants. Also, wir machen so viel Druck auf die Pflanzen, das ist schon fast wie Terrorismus. Und wer hier überlebt, das sind wirklich dann die die Eisernen, richtige harte Pflanzen. Nur die haben es verdient, rauszukommen. Ja, die sehen gut aus. Es sieht dieses Jahr ganz, ganz großartig aus. Wir haben etwa 180 Pflanzen von äh, immerhin äh, 23.000 und 180 Pflanzen. Das ist eine Überlebensrate von einem Prozent. This development work has led to the creation of a completely new grape variety of the Cabernet Sauvignon type, which is resistant to mold. Marion Bowes and her father Ernst have already planted the new variety in their fields. Now, for the first time, they can try the new Cuvée Cabernet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Complex, complex, and has a lot of potential. It's already very very round, very eingebunden, the whole Pyrazin. It looks as though Marianne Boos and her father have come out as winners in the climate lottery as the hot belt around the middle of the planet grows broader. South African wine growers, however, have not been as lucky. In future, they'll have to move their vineyards further and further away from the heat of the equator to the south, towards cooler waters. But this will give but a brief respite. Experts say that in 50 years' time, there will be hardly any wine production in South Africa. Back in Tuscany, the harvest is safely gathered in. The rest is up to the skill of the winemakers. Well, if something goes bad, it's just my fault. Now, <laughs> I can only spoil what I've done uh, all these months in the vineyard. With the scanty harvest, the final quality of the wine is more important than ever. So now I'm tasting and uh, deciding what, you, what I have to do. You have to find the right balance of color, uh, nose, acidity, and taste. Francesco Daddy must accustom himself to his wine production becoming more and more vulnerable year by year. I mean, humans are adapting since ages. Yeah, yeah but, 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 you, but you, can't the you can't necessarily yeah. continue growing the same cultivars of the grape. Mm -hmm. Of course, no. that, that will, will, it might will, be. Yeah. Will, will shift. One suggestion that it's reasonable is uh, to differentiate the production, not to focus only in one thing. Mm. Is that the way forward? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah we think so. Mm. I have plan B. <laughs> I have a plan. Pronto. Francesco has been busy. The painter, also. Qual era il problema? Yeah. Dov'è il pannello? 
he has completely renovated the family's old winery, which is to become a hotel. So, you know, lying down, here you have the bed, and over there you have the picture. You can see Siena in the fog now. So I'm trying to develop different activities here because uh, if this guy that you are telling me before is coming and uh, saying, oh, you cannot produce any more wine because the place is too hot, I say, no problem. I have uh, a place for tourists. I have the, a car calling me. <coughs> Grazie. Ciao. In order to diversify even further, Francesco has also invested in a brand new olive press, costing around 70,000 euro, and which is currently being installed. You know, as usual, a uh, big investment and a nice, beautiful uh, equipment, but the factory didn't provide us with the information necessary. I mean, that's, uh, that's Italy sometimes, you know. Subito, idraulico e tutto. Grazie. Arrivederci. I have quite a lot of clients uh, now coming here and pressing their own olives. And um, as a businessman, because I have also to think as a businessman, is, uh, is a big help for my winery. Sometimes it's difficult to explain how it's going to be, but I can close my eyes and I know how it's going to be. By producing both wine and olive oil and operating a hotel, Francesco Daddy hopes that he'll be able to survive in the future. It's hard to think about the 2020. Uh, I wish we have um, improved this place. I know that even though I won't succeed, and that would be very sad for me, but I know that at least I have made a try. The wind, in fact, is coming south, and in fact, from tomorrow, the weather will be, will be changing southwest. This guy will probably be able to survive somehow. Anyway, Do maybe else. not. Maybe not cultivating Sangiovese, but there's something else. Oh, I think he will survive. I think that he will find a way. We just have to think differently. Yeah. <laughs> Just what the world's climate will be like in the future is not something that could be predicted with certainty. One thing is certain, however, More there will be changes. Years worth of rainfall in just a week. Perhaps the wine on the shelves in the supermarket will no longer come from Spain or Italy, but from Denmark and Germany. Francesco Daddy has decided to take up the challenge. There are so many things to do here before saying, OK, I give up. So far, he has invested four million euro to equip himself to face the future. At least at the end, if everything goes bad, the bank will have a wonderful, <laughs> a wonderful site, a wonderful headquarter. <laughs> I can imagine uh, the president of the bank, the office up there with a beautiful, uh, with a beautiful landscape. <laughs>